Alright, as the title says, in this video I'm going to show you how to train or clone AI voice models completely for free and online. You don't need a nice computer or a nice GPU, you just need internet connection. We're going to be training an RVC voice model. If you haven't heard of RVC yet, RVC is the gold standard for voice cloning and voice conversion. As you can see, all of these thousands of voice models here were trained on RVC, most of them using version 2. It's completely free and open source, and for example, you can train a voice model of yourself as well as any other person, such as Selena Gomez, or Spongebob, or Taylor Swift, or literally any other person or character, as long as you have their voice. All those AI cover songs that you see online, those were also mostly done using RVC. So if you're completely new to this channel and new to RVC, I'll link some of our other videos in the description below so that you can easily learn how to use RVC. But let's jump right in. Now, traditionally, to train an AI voice model, you would need to download and install RVC on your computer. And you need to have an NVIDIA CUDA GPU. Otherwise, you can't train your own AI voice models. Also, traditionally, if you click on this Google Colab link to try to run RVC in Google Colab, you're gonna get disconnected really quickly. That's because Google Colab's free plan no longer allows graphical interfaces such as RVC. But here's a quick and dirty solution. As long as you don't use this user interface and somehow just run RVC using all code, then you can avoid this disconnect message from Google Colab and run this for free. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to link to this notebook in the description for you to copy and use it. So this notebook is called RVC V2 Disconnected. Thank you so much to these two folks, Kit and Noel, for writing this code. Now, note what it says here. This notebook is not designed to be used for inference, so voice-to-voice -voice conversion. Because, again, to just convert one voice to another voice, you don't need a GPU. Even if your computer sucks, you can still install and run RVC on your computer for voice-to-voice -voice conversion. And here's a full tutorial on how to install and run RVC locally on your computer. But again, the whole point of this is if you want to train your own voice model but you don't have a GPU, then you're out of luck. And that's why we need to run this notebook. Another warning is depending on how long you need to train your AI voice model, which is mostly determined by the number of epochs that you set, which I'll talk about in a second. That means you could have this running for like 20 minutes to over an hour, in which case if you're inactive for a certain amount of time, you might also get this disconnect message due to inactivity. Usually this is not an issue, but just in case you need to train a model for over an hour, for example, you need to paste in a code here, which periodically, you know, moves the mouse or click things around so that it doesn't sense you are inactive. Now this does go against Google Colab's terms and conditions, so I can't show you the code to paste in here. But honestly, just ask ChatGPT or something and you'll find it pretty easily. Wink wink. Alright, so first step is to run all these dependencies, and if you want to expand it to see what exactly it is, you can click on this and it would show you all the stuff you have to run. But there's too many cells that I need to click here, so I'm going to collapse this and then just run the whole thing. So every time you run this, you're going to get a warning because this is not officially authored by Google. So run this at your own discretion. And there are a few dependencies to install, so this is going to take several minutes. While we wait for this to run, we can actually move on to the next cell. So these run in sequential order. This cell will not run until this finishes. So alright, let's set the experiment name. So today we are going to train a model of Gura. So we need to name our experiment name. We can name this whatever we want. Let's call this Gura underscore experiment. Whenever you're naming these things, try not to add any spaces or special characters. So always use underscore instead of spaces. And then for all these settings, you can usually leave it at the default. Again, most of the models out there right now are trained using RVC version 2. So we should definitely keep it at version 2. For the pitch extraction algorithm, there are different algorithms to choose from, but RMVPE is the highest quality. So again, let's just choose RMVPE. Check pitch guidance if you want this voice model to be able to sing. It's always best to leave this on, so even if it's not singing, if it's just talking, this would still work. So you can see this cell is still running, but let's just click run on this one as well. So this will run after this cell has finished. 
Alright, so eventually as the cell keeps running and installs the dependencies, you're going to be asked to connect to Google Drive. So let's click connect and this step is important because eventually we need to upload our audio files into Google Drive. Alright, so while this is running, I'm going to show you the audio files that I'm going to use. So today we're going to train an AI voice model of Gura. So honestly, I, I just took some snippets of her talking from her videos that I found online. I extracted the audio into only two audio files, just to keep this really quick. If you do want to train a really high quality voice model, I would suggest getting at least five minutes of audio of that person. I'll play you these two clips real quick so you can hear what it sounds like. Mumble, speak up. Don't tell me to speak up! It'll give me flashbacks to when I was a baby shark being yelled at to speak up. It's very frustrating when you are speaking as loud as you can and then somebody tells you to speak up. Project your voice! Pro just project your voice. Just talk louder. But All right, so that's one sample clip. Here's the second one. And I can't comprehend what is wrong with me. I am just trying my best! It's okay, I didn't really speak. Back in Atlantis, I was rather... Mm. Alright, so the total duration of this is less than two minutes, which is quite low. Again, if you want to really train a good quality voice model, get at least five minutes of data. But just to make this tutorial quick, that's all we're going to need. Now the next step is, as you can see in the instructions, we need to put these two audio files into a folder with the character name and then put that folder in a zip file. So I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call that Gura. And then I will just simply move these two files into Gura. Next step is I need to create the zip file. So again, I'll click new and then all the way down here, choose compressed zip folder. And let's name this Gura as well. So I will drag this Gura folder into this Gura.zip file. And we are done. That's pretty much it. So one more thing to note is inside this Gura folder, it doesn't really matter what you name the files. All right, so audio file names do not matter. And these audio files should all be in WAV format. So if it's in MP3, you can use this free software called Audacity to convert your MP3 into a WAV file. All right, so we've prepared our zip file Let's now upload to Google Drive. I'm going to go back into Google Colab and make sure the above cells are done running. And you can see from this green check mark that it indeed has finished running. All right, so the next step is we need to upload this guru.zip file into a folder in our Google Drive named RVC Disconnected. So you can either open up your Google Drive and make a folder there, or we can actually pull it up over here. So if we click on this folder icon on the left, you can see that there's a drive folder and this drive folder is available only after you click connect to Google Drive from that message which popped up a few minutes ago. So let's click into this and then expand my drive. And then you should be able to see this RVC disconnected over here. I guess it auto created that folder for us already. So all you got to do is drag and drop this guru.zip into this RVC disconnected folder and then click OK. And then you can see down here, this loading wheel shows the progress of the upload. So we got to wait for this blue circle to finish before we can move on to the next step. And while we're waiting, we can actually rename this to gura.zip because that's the name of our zip file. All right, you can see it's almost finished loading, in which case this will disappear. All right, so it's finished loading. We can now run the cell. All right, so let me collapse this. And if all goes well, you should see a green check mark and this message, data set imported. So we can move on to the next step. Pre-processing and feature extraction. You can click show code if you want. You don't really need to customize or add anything. So I'm just going to run the whole thing. Same with this one. I'm going to run the whole thing. And again, these run in sequential order. So this needs to finish running before this runs. So it doesn't matter if you click run on both of these. The pre-processing and feature extraction is it's kind of taking or grouping all your audio files together in that zip file and then breaking it up into smaller chunks. So you can see it broke those two audio files into all these smaller WAV files. And then if you scroll down here, it looks like this section has also finished running. So next we can move on to training. These two we can ignore for now, but what these two do is let's say we finished training a model today, but it wasn't enough steps. The quality isn't good enough and you want to train that model even more in the future. Well, you can load those previously trained files back into here to train even further, which I'll show you in a second. 
But for now, we can skip these two cells and then click this one. All right, so this is index training. We can click run on this before I explain it. So the index file is used to manage the training data set, and it's also known to slightly reduce timber leakage. And so that's what this step is doing right now. It's creating the index file. All right, so next up, we can move on to training. So save frequency. We'll skip this for now. I'll talk more about this in a second, but total epochs is how many iterations of training do you want? And then batch size is how many WAV files do you want to input for training in one epoch? So if you scroll back all the way here, you can see that it has broken down our two audio files into all of these smaller WAV files. So how many of these do you want to input into one session of training? Usually you don't want to input all of them into one session, as this will likely cause overfitting on your data. So if we select a batch size of eight, it basically takes eight of those small WAV files per training session or per epoch. We can leave this at the default of eight. And then total epochs again is the number of training sessions. Because our audio data set is less than two minutes, I would just train this at like, I don't know, 50 epochs I think would be more than enough. So let's just do 50. All right, moving back to save frequency, what this is is how many epochs do you want to run before you save a snapshot of your progress? And this is important because if for whatever reason your collab disconnects or your, your power disconnects or your computer blows up, at least you save a snapshot of your progress in your Google Drive so you can continue later. You don't have to start from scratch the next time. So if I set the total epochs to 50 and the save frequency is 10 epochs, then this basically saves it five times. It'll save it once at epoch 10, it'll save it again at epoch 20, and then 30, 40, and finally 50. If I set this to 25, then it would save it two times, once at epoch 25 and the second time at epoch 50. And then if I set this to 50, well, it only saves it one time at the end of the 50 epochs of training. Because this is 50 epochs, it's pretty low. This should go pretty quickly. I'm just going to set this save frequency to 50, so it only saves it once. And the rest of these settings, we can pretty much leave it at the default. So let's click play, and it will start training. And you can see it opens up this TensorBoard window here, which you can pretty much ignore. You just need to look at the code here to see your progress. All right, so after a while, you should start to see the epochs. So here's epoch one, it's finished training, and then it moves on to epoch two, three, four, etc., etc. And this would keep training until epoch 50, which is the total epochs that we set up here. So again, this is the most time consuming step. If you set the epoch number to a long time, like over 100 or 200, then it's going to take over half an hour to finish, during which you could get a disconnect message due to inactivity. So what you could do is either add some code at the beginning, which I talked about, which would make the mouse click at random intervals of time to make it seem like you are still active. Or you can also just leave this window on and then monitor it and just periodically click around and make it seem like you are still active. All right, you can see it's almost at 50. Perfect. So if all goes well, you should see this green check mark here. And then as you see, it trained all the way to epoch 50. And then it says training is done, saving the final checkpoint, success. So perfect. Now, if you scroll on to the next window, this is where you can either export the model to your Google Drive or export it to Hugging Face. This is very important because once you close this collab session, all your files and all your progress will be gone. So you have to save it somewhere else to retain your progress and actually save your voice model. So let's just export it to Google Drive. Again, I'm going to open this so you can see in my Google Drive, in this RVC disconnected folder, it has created a folder called Gura Experiment, which right now only has this .index file. So once we click this, it's going to save our model into this folder. Now, if you click skip models, it's only going to copy the weight file or the .pth file. So this is your actual voice model. Check this if you don't want to train it further. But if you do want to train it further, leave this off so that it also imports a G and a D file, which I'll talk more about in a second. So let's just leave this off and then click run. All done. 
All right, so you should see all done. And if you click this refresh, you should be able to see this, guraexperiment.pth. This is the voice model that you need to import into RVC in order to change whatever audio into Gura's voice. This is the most important file. However, you can see that it has also added a D file and a G file. So what on earth are those? Let's say I've tried this Gura voice model the quality isn't great. I want to train this further. So the next day, I find some new audio files, which I'm going to use to train this, and I want to train it for more epochs, for example. So you don't have to start from scratch. You can just open this Collab Notebook again, and then click Run on all of these. The experiment name, make sure it's the same experiment name as your folder name over here. So we named it Gura Experiment, so this should be Gura Experiment. And so you run this, and then you add in your new audio files in the zip folder, which I already showed you near the beginning of the video. And then after you run all these cells, once you go to training, here's the important part. Here is where you need to input the step count or the number located on your model's G and D files here. So you can see the number that we have is 2333333. You just need to run this cell before you run all these other training cells to resume from your previous training. And that's all there is to it. All right, finally, let's actually test this out in RVC. So in my Google Drive, I'm going to go to this RVC disconnected folder and look for the folder with the experiment's name, which in our case is Gura Experiment. So I'm gonna double click on this, and then you can see all the files that we've downloaded from the Colab training session. So the only file we need for voice-to-voice -voice conversion is this one, guraexperiment.pth. So I'm gonna download this in my RVC folder inside the weights folder. You can see I already have a few other ones downloaded here. All right, so once we're done that, we can go ahead and launch RVC. So I'm gonna double click on goweb.bat. All right, under this dropdown, we are going to select the new voice model that we just made. If you don't see this, click refresh voice and then try again. I'm gonna use my voice and convert it to Gura's voice. So because I'm a male, she's a female, and her voice is pretty high pitch, we gotta transpose this by like 14 semitones and see if it works. Next, I gotta add my input file into this audios folder, and I already have this here. So actually, let me play this for you real quick so you hear what the original sounds like. Hey there, it's Gura. No, seriously, it's me. I'm the real Gura. All right, so this is called myvoice.wave, so let me just change this to myvoice.wave, and we should be good to go. The rest of these settings we can leave as is. All right, let's click convert. All right, let's click play. Hey there, it's Gura. No, seriously, it's me. I'm the real Gura. This is really good considering I only use like under two minutes of audio from Gura to train this voice model. So there you go. If you don't have a GPU, this is how you train a voice model completely online for free in Google Colab. And guess what? If you don't want to install RVC on your computer and do voice to voice conversion this way, actually, I found a way to do that online completely for free as well. So stay tuned for my next video on that. I'll probably publish it a few days from now. If you found this video helpful, we would really appreciate it if you could like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm show our videos to more people. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools and AI jobs out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.